Warships Legends New Player Guide 2022 Getting Started and Classes. That is the exact video title uh, that I'm going to be referencing in this video. Um, so, we already talked about armor thresholds, we already talked about a lot of different overviews of the lines. I talked about it a little more in depth in the last video I did. Um, now we're going to be talking about how to actually captain the ship, where to position this ship. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about commanders as well. So, let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to do a tier 6 match in the North Carolina. Now, for those of you wondering, I am running a dispersion build, so this is going to be... Let me pull him up, William Sims. This is my commander. I run Paolo Yorvel as one inspiration, Agilent Sharnhorst as the other. I'd run Cunningham if you don't have uh, Sharnhorst. Is that worth it? No. No, that's not worth it. Um, Alright, moving on. So, that's going to be my build for this game. I'm not running a camouflage. You could be, but I'm not. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to position the ship, how to generate crossfires, what to actually do with the ship, angling, all that stuff. Let's go ahead and take it out. This one's going to be more of a gameplay focused tutorial rather than just me talking at the menu tutorial. Uh, so it's a little different than the other two, but I feel like we've gone over enough that we can actually start getting to some gameplay. Okay, crash zone. I'm not a huge fan of this match of this map, and I think it actually means that we are going to be bottom tier, which it's okay. It happens. You don't have to panic when you're bottom tier. You just have to know what to do. Okay, so here we are. We are in... Actually, we're top tier. Okay, they have a Weimar, though. So, first of all, when you're first spawning into the match, you see maybe an HE spam ship or something like that, like a Weimar, a Saray, you know, somewhat of a Pensacola. The first thing to do is not to throw the ship in reverse. That is a horrible idea. Why is that a horrible idea? Well, because you're taking yourself, yourself out of the fight. You're not going to be able to actually hit these guys. You're kind of hoping to outrange them. You're not going to. They have more range than you do in some cases. You're not going to do that. And what's more, it's going to be very hard to hit them. And it's you get a better understanding of this when you actually play cruisers. Um, if you actually just, you know play cruisers, you'll notice that a lot of the good ones are dodging. So how can they do that? Well, it takes time for your shells to actually hit. Also, don't abandon your flank. That is another thing. Like this Leander. Don't abandon the flank. He's left us at a severe disadvantage, and now we have to try and save this flank here. Um, we talked about armor angling, so don't go flat broadside. If I was going to go flat broadside, I need to recognize that I'm going flat broadside. And the second I see myself getting spotted, I need to imagine and prepare myself for the fact that there are shells on the way, especially being an American ship. People know these things get nuked if they go broadside, so they will absolutely try and hit you. So there's the Weimar. Let's take a shot at him, try and get rid of him. And pray for the best there. We can lob that island. There's the battleships. Uh, we got him a little bit. Not much. But that's 5k that he's not getting off of us. And that's 5k that's going to make him a little easier to kill. So, like I was talking about, don't retreat. Don't reverse at the start of the match. Because, oh boy, destroyer. Anytime you see a destroyer, hit a destroyer. So we went ahead and took a shot at the Falkland there. There we go. That's about half his health gone. So that's going to make our destroyer have a severe advantage. Even if we don't kill this guy, our destroyer now has much more of an advantage. You know, he only has to fight a half health destroyer instead of a full health destroyer. So that's huge for him. So if our destroyer just does his job, he's going to win that fight. All he has to do is go shoot him. As long as he's not getting support from his teammates, you know. Let's go out and support this guy. So, like we're talking about, these guys dodge. 
So the way to actually counter that is not to go longer range. That just gives them more of an advantage. Because they're you're a big ship, you're easy to hit, you're not agile. You get the ability they get the ability to spam you and they will hit you. And they also have a lot it's a lot less punishing if they miss, because they can reload again in three, four, you know, sometimes ten seconds, depending on the cruiser. You need to take about thirty seconds to reload. So you gotta make your shots count more. So how do you do that? You close the distance. You're a lot more likely to hit them up close than you are at far. So you can see we're 12 kilometers. You want to be, this is kind of like the minimum you want to be when engaging these guys. And use your spotting uh, range to your advantage as well. You need to recognize that if you're still shooting them and they're 18 kilometers away, you are never going to hit them. But they're going to be hitting you, catching you on fire. You do have to be careful about going flat broadside here. So you gotta recognize what's spotting you, recognize how to drop spot, and when to drop spot to force them to close the distance. So we are gonna angle to the Florida. Florida does not overmatch us. Now because we are in a tier 5, tier 6 match, you see, he is going to be an annoyance now. He's at long range. So at this point, we're going to go back to the cover. Let's try and take out one of their threats on the board, since that Leander's going to give us that angle. Undershot him. That is unfortunate. So let's go ahead and limit who can shoot at us here by reversing a little bit. We're going to reverse back into some cover, especially since we are alone. He does not need assistance. We need assistance. So we're going to go ahead and take a shot at this guy's bow, because we can. Now you see this guy's at 16 kilometers, he's still shooting us, and he's going to continue to still shoot us, because he can. If we get a little further out, we should be approaching the limits, the limits of his range now. Um, because he has kited his... yeah, we're out of range for him. Perfect. He's kited himself into oblivion. So now we need to either drop spot or get it to a point where he cannot shoot at us. The destroyer is in A, or well it could be the could be the Florida I suppose. We are shooting right at his bow because we overmatch him. He's a tier 6, we've got 16 inch guns, and you can see we hit him for 8k. Now doing this at tier 7 isn't going to work, but you see we just sit it out this guy through the bow. We gotta be careful about this angle though. Guy looks like he's running a secondary build. That guy, he should not need help. His side's fine. If you're requesting help when you're evenly matched, unless there's a destroyer by you, that's a that's a you issue. So this Florida is starting to close the distance, and we know that. He has been shooting HE this whole game. We're going to go ahead and turn out. It is a risky play, but we need to start kiting away just so that way he can't ram us, basically. We recognize he's starting to get low on health. We have an advantage because we can overmatch him. He cannot. He knows that. I know that. He's dead now, but... So, what we are going to do... We cannot drop spots, so let's turn back in now. Because we want to close the distance, not drop the distance, or not increase distance. So we're not going to kite away. We're going to cut in. All stations requesting now you can see we did get overloaded this side, obviously. And our teammate also decided to kite to the edge of the map without actually doing anything. It is harder and harder to hit this guy because... Once again, the issue is that he is agile, we are not, and we have floating shells. We want to close the distance, not increase it. I know I've said it a few times, but that's the only way we're going to beat this guy. And it seems he does not recognize that. We're going to predict where he's going. And we get overpens, because it's a Weimar. Luckily, this ship is going to be leaving Tier 6, so you'll see it less frequently. Yeah, he 
He is shredding us. That might be death for us right there. Yes, it is. Not before we take him out, though. And that's going to be enough to give us the win. So. We take a look. We did 103,000 damage. Two kills. Three citadels. Four defends. We didn't get the cap, but we prevented them from getting it. We were overloaded. And our teammate just kind of uh, retreated. Left us to deal with it. So, there is a way that you can do good, um, and actually this is the best way to do good, uh, coming from someone who holds, a, who has held a couple damage record and holds a damage record in a battleship right now. Um, being aggressive is not something to be afraid of. You need to know how to do it well, but it's not something to be afraid of. So, we did die, but we held the flank. And we didn't retreat immediately. So, like I said, know when to close the distance. Know when to strategically pull back a little bit. Such as, not when we were trying to reduce or you know, outrange the Weimar. The whole goal there was to get to a point where the Florida no, ha no longer had a direct line of sight on us. And maybe the Weimar would hit the island. Uh, but most importantly, the Florida would drop his spot. He'd, forced, he'd be forced to come close the distance... Uh, get closer, maybe come out flat broadside. When they come to you, you're more often than not going to end up with a crossfire. So, that's not say retreat and abandon the cap, because if you do that, you know, if they're smart, they'll just go right into the cap and then leave you. And then you'll just lose on points. Uh, but, recognize when you can do that, and recognize when that doesn't work, and when to actually push back out and defend the cap. So, that's a tier 6 match. Let's go ahead and do one where we cannot overmatch. Let's do the... Uh, let's do the... Hmm. These are all tier 7s. Wait. Why? Oh, I guess because I just ran it. I'm just sitting here wondering why I have the North Carolina in a tier 7 list. Uh, what was I gonna do? Let's go ahead and do another... I'm gonna try and keep this tech tree ships uh, related, so... Let me just suffer through the Bismarck, I guess. Good chance this one... Or, you know what? Let's do the Leon. Let's do the Leon. What's up, Doug? You know what? No. I'm pulling back. And... Yeah, no. I was gonna say it. I'm doing this because I don't want to... I want to show what to do when you don't overmatch, right? How to actually deal with that. Um, I was gonna run the car Cholo, but... Because that's a nice little ship that you can get aggressive in. Maybe I should do one more in the car Cholo as well. Just to show you guys some some aggression. It's not all passive, you know? Trident, so... Could be top tier, could be bottom tier, I don't know. It doesn't concern me too bad at tier 6. Tier 7 is where being bottom tier is kind of like a bigger deal. So... Because of legendary tier. But, with the introduction of tier 8, that should be... Limiting that to an extent, so... Trident. We're bottom tier. It is a carrier game as well. There are two destroyers. They have a radar cruiser in Atlanta. So the Leon has 16 guns, but it does. They're tiny guns. They're less than 14 inches. So it doesn't overmatch anything. So we got to recognize that. We also have to recognize that because these are tiny guns, um, the angles which we're going to get penetrations are going to be more limited. That's not to say we're not going to get penetrations, because we will, but we have to know where to shoot. And this is kind of where you're going to have to shoot at tier 7 as well, because you're not going to have the tool of overmatching. It's mostly tier 5, tier 6, tier 4, where you're going to have overmatching. And then legendary tier, if you're in the Yamato. So the carrier is on our side. we got a quick shot on the flounder there. Let's take it. I don't know that that's going to clear, but... We'll take it anyway. 
Uh, we got 2,900. Was that the carrier? I don't think that was the carrier, man. I think the car troll out there is AFK. So, this is a scenario where... Oh, no, he's not. Oh, well. We took the shot. We gotta support the destroyer with some AA. So where do you aim if you can't overmatch and they're not going broadside like that Kansas? Well, you aim at the superstructure. Uh, this guy may go broadside though. Let's not push out too far because there are some threats out there. He is a little angled. Kansas, however, is not. So we're gonna aim at the waterline. Oh, never mind. There's the Akatsuki. We're gonna shoot that guy instead. Especially since our cruiser just died. If you get the opportunity, you need to shoot the destroyer. Especially since we have a severe disadvantage here. We can't... We gotta be careful about this. This Kansas could smack us. Oof. Oh my goodness. That hurt. So, we gotta be careful about the angle we show. We're no longer spotted by the destroyer. So, tiny guns. Keep our head on the swivel. The only destroyer they have. Okay, so the destroyer is dead, so I guess our guy torped them. Go and take a shot at the Kansas, who is pushing out a little too far. Ah, uh, there we go. That's what, 5k? Not what we want. But that's kind of why I showed this ship, is you're not going to get crazy penetrations, right? So you got to be a little more strategic with how you place your shots. Uh, Kansas is showing a flat broadside, and really, you want to be closer. That's where you're going to get more penetration from in this ship. There's 10k. I do 300, really. Alright, let's be careful about the angle. And this guy is going to be introduced to all of the guns. Let's go ahead and pop a heal. Now if this guy gives us a flat broadside to shoot at, we can nuke him. Potentially in a single shot, but we have to be careful about when we, we're holding this shot because he's angling, although our guy is going to get in the torps, and that's going to do it for him. So our guy helped us out. We were going to get a nasty salvo there a second ago. Alright, so we know the Kansas is coming out. We don't want to show flat broadside on our end, but we do want to get off a broadside on him. So we're going to barely... Now we also have to recognize there's a good chance his guns are turned. He just fired, so we don't have to be as concerned about it. Let's go ahead and slow down. He got our destroyer. Amy at the waterline. We're waiting, we're waiting. That's pretty good, we'll go ahead and take that. Only 8k. Now we're gonna angle in. You see, we want him to hit our belt at an angle. We are getting in close, we are brawling. Uh, let's continue turning right, because there's the carrier coming. The fun police with torps. Uh, there they are, and that's gonna do it for us. Yeah, there's uh, significantly less you can do about a carrier, especially in a ship that doesn't have good AA. But, we uh, didn't really do that much ourselves here. The side did get overloaded, unfortunately, uh, and our teammate died a little early. But if nothing else, we prevented them from getting the cap, and we shot down planes. That's kind of the unfortunate nature of carriers, is a lot of times you can't shoot anything back, but they can shoot you. So, with that said, 
Let's go ahead and go back, and let's get one in the car, Cholo. What's up again, Azuma? So that's what we do when we don't overmatch. Now, there are a lot of better examples of that, because Leon has tiny guns, like I said. So, But let's go ahead and just ignore the overmatching factor, and instead, let's focus on positioning and being aggressive effectively. There we go. So that should give us a little more of an advantage. Now we have a concealment of 13.9. So we should be able to get that to 13.7 before the concealment mod. So this ship is going to be very hidden after the concealment mod. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, this commander is just the... It's just Paladi Revel. It's just the guys. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, so it's Paladi Revel. It's a tank build. Uh, slash secondary build. Let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, Doug, that is correct. If the carrier decides to just focus you, there is nothing you can do. Now, the carrier was actually shooting destroyers as well, so there is that. Uh, so it wasn't just us, but he definitely decided to focus the flank, and because our cruiser died a little early, that means that there's one less thing that, you know, there is to shoot at. We actually only got a run, made it us once or twice, uh, but... We were constantly in the AA danger zone of shooting down planes. And we, to an extent, had to be to help our guy take out the destroyer and help our guy not get focused by the carrier. Okay. We're top tier here. Um, this is a brawling match. So let's go ahead and... Sometimes what works is if you go right, it like, and this spawn, it's kind of weird. Sometimes, if I were to go right, that would be a good strategy because it's normally a destroyer who just kind of camps that. And this sometimes, if our destroyer kind of goes here, then he's going to spot him. And if we're over here to shoot him, he's not going to be able to hide behind the island. So, I'm not abandoning the flank. I'm actually trying to support the destroyer the best possible. We're going to try to get aggressive here. So there is a carrier. The Fuso is coming to us. There is the destroyer in the cap. There's a Colorado. He is coming over towards us. So what I could do here... I mean, we did just shake this guy's torps. He ended up changing targets because we shook him. I have a couple of options. I could have popped the smoke screen. But because we're agile, we can kind of dodge. This is a pretty agile battleship. There are destroyer torps right there. So we're going to try and surprise this guy if he doesn't end up torpedoing him. He left the cap, okay. We're going to continue with our aggressive push. And we'll use the smoke screen as needed. Okay, so we're spotted. Let's go ahead and use the smoke screen. This is a unique consumable to the Italians, and you don't need this to be aggressive. And this is a bit of a ballsy play that I wouldn't be making if I weren't in the Italian battleship. So we got a broadside Fuso, let's go ahead and take that shot real quick. At the waterline, let's begin angling. There's 20k. And 
we're gonna go at an angle. Now we do have to be careful because there is a good chance the destroyer is starting to get torqued back. He is still flat broadside to us. Go ahead and take another shot there. And he's gone. Dev strike. Okay. So, a couple options. We could, one, try and brawl this Friedrich, which is probably going to be the best thing, because if we end up going carrier hunting, we're going to go broadside to the Friedrich. We don't want to do that. We're going to take some shots at him. Nothing great there. And again, we got to be careful about the angle, or that's going to happen. Luckily, we do have a bunch of heals, so we can kind of limit that a little bit. There's the Akatsuki. Let's see if we can get a shot on him. Doesn't look like it. Oof. Well, that didn't go according to the California's plans. We're still showing a bad angle to this guy. Let's go ahead and change it up. Let's begin kiting. I know it's a risky play, but we gotta do what we gotta do here. We can't go broadside to the Friedrich and give a good angle to the car solo. But we gotta help these guys out. I'm gonna try and focus the car solo. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like things went too well for our other flank over there, so the other guys are going to come to us. Um, maybe I should focus the Colorado. Oh, there's the Mayhem. We're going to go ahead and pop our secondary booster real quick. And let's hope for some good pens. Pop another heal. And in fact, let's go ahead and use the smoke screen. Now we are going to be careful about the torps because we know they are coming. There they are. There's one rack. He is showing us a pretty good angle, so let's go ahead and take the shot. If he gets spotted again, that is. Ah, we shot just a second too early. But, should be able to take out the destroyer here. Unless we don't. We survived. Well, I'm gonna guess that that did not go according to plan for this guy. There's the destroyer dead. One of them. Take a quick shot at the belt there, get horrible dispersion. And what is shooting us now? Friedrich. Pop a heal. And there's a good hit. Citadel them. We're going to be trying our best to take out one of these guys.
That's a horrible aim for, on my part, but it should be enough to kill him. Take a shot at the destroyer there. Oh, that's not good. Oh, uh, this Friedrich might be able to get us. Ah, darn. All right. Well, that didn't go according to plan. Of course, the carrier could have been doing a better job of destroyer hunting. Uh, but not a bad one. 89,000 damage, three kills. We took out the destroyer. Overall, pretty good. Unfortunately, probably going to be a loss. Tried our best. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's uh, that was an aggressive play. I mean, the red team just kind of did their own weird little thing. That's usually not how this map plays out. Um, but, and we also got a little ballsy which we wouldn't have necessarily done were we not in the Karacholo if we didn't have those smoke screens. So we do have to be cautious of that. That said, I am going to, let's see, how long are we taking this? We're at 30 minutes. I'm going to do one more at tier 7. Show you guys some high tier play. And let's do the, uh... What's a common ship that you guys are going to run a lot? Bismarck. That's pretty common. Yeah. Bismarck is pretty common. Iowa's pretty common. Chat, Bismarck or Iowa? Tell me what to do. Those are really the main two, I think. The rest are significantly less common. Why on earth is the North Carolina showing up? Excludes, adds excluded ship if it suits selected battle type. Why is that? Can someone explain this to me? Can you just... What is the point of that? Oh, I guess it's because we ran it. <laughs> Iowa. Alright, I'll do the Iowa then. Azkaban, if you're going to take Saipan, I'm going to bust out the Worcester. But that is not for this stream. This is a tutorial for the new players. For those who don't know, Saipan's pretty busted. Um, not really a whole lot you could do against it. Even if you're running an AA monster like the Iowa, it's not enough. Really, you have to be running an AA cruiser or a Friesland, I think, to deal with that. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Azkaban. Oh, no, you're not. You fucker. You fucker. You liar. Alright, um... We are bottom tier. We're going against legendary tier, which you won't be doing that soon. Because tier 8's coming. <clears throat> Ochakov. Okay, so we have spawned over here on this map. Are there any Yamatos? No, there's not. There is a Conqueror, though. So that is still concerning. So, we don't want to we don't want to overextend. That's the key here. Normally, what's going to happen is there's going to be a couple people congregating here. You might have an HE spammer or a spammer in general congregate here, or you know, potentially they're going to push out even further. So Montana, right there. We don't overmatch him. He does not overmatch us, but he has more guns than us. 
So what are we going to do? And a Massachusetts, oh boy. Well, I guess we're going to wait till he turns broadside to us. That might not be a bad strategy. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and take that shot, and then we're immediately going to angle in because that is a lot of 16-inch guns out there. And they are... Dear God, that's a lot of 16-inch guns. Uh, we got them for 15k. Pretty good. But now we have to worry about everything else that is now going to shoot at us. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That wasn't even bad angling, it's just there were so many guns coming at us. We are going to need some support. Now, no matter how good of a player you are, when you're outloaded, outmatched this much, you're not going to win without some support. We need more things that the enemy team can shoot at. If you're getting focused, it's not going to go good. Alright, here we go. Massachusetts is going to go broadside. Let's go ahead and take that shot. Conquer is out there broadside. Alaska's coming over. I didn't see what we got him for. Like, 8k. There's a destroyer out there. Double Minotaurs might get torped, which would be lovely. For the enemy team, that is. Uh, well, there went an Ochakov. That's not good. That's one of our radar cruisers. Montana is going to come out flat broadside to us. We do have to be careful about the angle we present to him. I am not advocating for you to sit here in, in the back and snipe the whole game. However, we don't want to rush in and be the only thing they can shoot at. We want to hold this flank. And if we can hold it effectively, if we can prevent them from getting into the cap from here, we don't have to push in any further. We have no reason to really push in. We're at no more of a disadvantage than they are at this range. And we need to recognize that. And to be honest, it's almost tempting enough that to let these guys just sit here and spam, so that way they can't shoot at us and they've got nothing to shoot at, right? But any help we can give, because their smoke screen is not going to last forever. He's going to take a torp. Oh, no, he's not. Nice. Oof, that hurt. That really, really hurt. Oh, goodness. Uh, let's go ahead and get behind the island, because that's a lot of torpedoes, and I cannot shake those, so... Luckily, we have the early warning up there. And hopefully our guys can start to... Now, the Conqueror is now all out there on his own. Massachusetts is going out flat broadside. Let's go ahead and aim towards him real quick. We don't want to let the Minotaurs be the only things that the enemy has to shoot at, because we don't want them to die. So we need to push out there as quickly as possible before they all get death struck. There was 15k off the Massa. There's a broadside Alaska out there. Now, luckily, because they've all kind of congregated here, so this guy's a little angled, we're actually going to shoot for the superstructure there. We're going to shoot for the superstructure, like we said, and get nothing. It's probably due to aim, though. I am not going to shoot that guy just because of the range. I'm not likely to hit him, and there are other things that can shoot at him. We're going to take a shot at the Alaska. The radar cruiser should be higher priority in most cases than the battleships. Although, the Minotaur just did get touched. Ouch.
There are significantly less things out here now. We need to take a shot at the Shima. We got nothing else to shoot at. We need to take that shot. He is one tap. If we get one shell on target, it should be enough to kill him. Somebody got him, thankfully. Nice work. Teams are starting to whittle away a little bit. Uh, the Alaska is their biggest carry potential ship at this point. So, we do... Oh, shit, I completely forgot this guy's here. Let's go ahead and turn and brawl this guy. Now, if he recognizes that his HE can overmatch us, we are going to be in deep shit. Especially since he's got more hit points, more guns, faster reload, and super gills. Or no, he's got the same reload, my apologies. Oof. Oh boy. Luckily, Conqueror is pretty squishy in a lot of cases, unless it goes angled like that. We are all alone, and there's a good chance we're going to end up dying here. And let's go ahead and angle in a little bit. Oh my goodness. We're just trying to take as much as possible off this guy. Now, unfortunately, he does have help. Unfortunately, we're not getting Citadels, which is a little trolly. There we go. There's a Citadel. It's not what we want. But it might be enough to do the trick. Uh, we did take signif a significant amount of health off that guy before we went down. Um, the Alaska did help him out, or maybe it was the Massachusetts, I don't know. But, he's pretty low. We've got a, a full health Yamato out there. we got a Vanguard, we got a Massa. And we have a Kleber. Which, as long as the Alaska is going to be way out there, he should be able to finish off a lot of the battleships. So that is good. Uh, good chance we win this one, I think. Because we have a destroyer left, that is. Which, let's go ahead and watch it and see what happens here. Just to kind of demonstrate that you don't always have to carry with damage to win. Not that this is bad. 142 is pretty good. Ah, uh, this guy got spotted. Very lucky that Conqueror didn't have HE. He is probably going to Death Strike Flounder, though. No, he's barely going to not. Should have dropped spot, though. That's another chunk of health gone off the enemy team and they don't have much left the Alaska is way out there not really doing anything for his team at all don't ask me why he's out there Our victory is in sight. Uh, because the Conqueror and Flounder are just gonna get screwed up by the Kleber so we held the flank we took some health off the enemy but most importantly we held the flank long enough for our teammates to win because the enemy significantly overloaded this side more than our team did. What happened to that Massachusetts? He got smacked. He was full health a minute ago. Let's not throw this one, guys. I mean, even if the Colbert just retreats, that's all he really has to do, in theory. The points disadvantage is too much at this point. Uh, they got our Vanguard, and that Massa might go down too. I think he's on fire. Yeah, good chance the mass is going down too. He should launch some more torps, I think. Apparently not. I think he's gonna just retreat. Or no, he's going for the flounder. That's what he's doing. That makes sense, because that's gonna knock some points off the board. He got the Conqueror anyway. Yeah, so you notice, more often than not, if you can hold the flank, you know, that's going to be enough to, to win the match for you. Just help your teammates. That's part of being a good player, is recognizing how you can best help your teammates. In this case, the Alaska really should have helped the uh, Minotaurs a little more, but they did get overextended. 
I don't know that I would have been able to really help them that much. Um, so yeah, hold your flanks, and when you can't be aggressive, and there's scenarios like that where you cannot, hold your flanks, help your teammates, and try and survive. Do what you can, when you can. This one's definitely going to be a win at this point. Let's go ahead and go back to port. We are getting very close to the Belfast. So, if we take a look at the standings here, good chance we lost the card. Cholo won. Yes, we did. But the other ones we won. We did pretty good, too. 103,000 damage there. The Leon, uh, we did not do as good on. But, you know, because we held them for so long, once again, the teammates kind of came through. We took off where, what we could when we could. Uh, the Iowa, you know, you guys just saw that one. And it was enough for our team to win. We didn't do the most damage. We didn't do the least amount of damage, for sure. 142 is nothing to be ashamed about at all. That's pretty good. Uh, but, at Legendary tier, it takes more than damage. And you definitely could do more, I think. Um, so, with that said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it provided some insight into what you should be doing how to best position and captain the battleships, um, what to be doing in different scenarios with different kinds of ships, uh, and how they're best used. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to go ahead and back off of this one and cut this one here. Um, what time is it? 12.05. I could probably stream a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to go grab some food real quick. I'll be back on in maybe 30 minutes or so, and I'll do some, some regular streaming. Probably with some Tallinn. Uh, hope to see you guys there. I'll catch you guys in a little bit.